What's up, YouTube? I am so pumped for you guys to be here. Now, I am really, really excited for today's video because we are going to dive into light, shadows, how to use it effectively with your work, how to make sure that you're not doing too much, especially when it comes to female brides, all of these things. But before I dive in, I wanna tell you guys a little bit about one of my favorite things that I'm doing right now, but I have a free two-hour training that is jam-packed full of information to help you guys run your business. Um, so if you guys wanna go down, click on the link below, you can access that, or you can go to twpmasterclass.com. Of course, at the end of it, there is gonna be all this, there's gonna be some kind of pitch and sell for the course that I have, but it is jam-packed. But I think you can also find a ton of value from the free training. And so really excited for you guys to check that out. But without further ado, I'm really, really pumped to talk to you guys about light and shadow, so enjoy it. Um, but also make sure you guys check out that free training below. Now, for those of you that know me, you know that I absolutely love light and shadows and using them for depth to create emotion and all kinds of things. This is one of the main reasons why I shoot in black and white. It allows me to see shadows clearly as light hits someone's face and allows me to capture more of the emotion, um, which is what I am extremely passionate about. And as I shoot in black and white, I can see just kind of, especially on one of the uh, electric viewfinders on the mirrorless cameras, I can see exactly what I wanna capture, exactly how it is. Now, I love using shadows in my wedding work because it's a huge factor in bringing emotion and authenticity to the moments, uh, whereas flat light doesn't do the greatest, th greatest job at that. Flat light has its place and can look really gorgeous. I get my inspiration from um, like old 1600 and 1700 painters like Vermeer and Rembrandt to see how they use light in their photographs. And after all, they've been doing a lot longer than I have, right? And so in order to properly use shadows on a wedding day, you have to understand the different types of shadows and lighting techniques because they're extremely helpful. The first is flat light. This is often the most used lighting scenario because it's in most part what we want to do with our subject. We wanna make them look flattering. We wanna make it look like it's nice and even light on them. And so we'll use this with open shade. We'll use this uh, when it's cloudy outside. And so you'll especially see people use this outside. Sometimes you'll even use this as the bride is getting ready and she faces the, the window or something like that. It's safe and it's flattering and it allows you to see more detail in the skin, which is sometimes uh, good, sometimes bad, uh, but it's good, but it's far less dramatic and clean. Now, if we take the light uh, that we see and we raise it up a little bit, you'll see butterfly lighting. This is also referred to as paramount lighting because it's used in a lot of movies like old fashioned paramount pictures used to use this as like their key lighting that they used to go with um, for the ladies. And so this was a really beautiful way to accentuate the women's jawline. And uh, so you can see right through in here and it actually creates a little shadow under the nose, whereas that's where they get the name butterfly from. But you also wanna be careful because if you bring the light too low, you lose those shadows and it looks almost like a horror movie or you get raccoon eyes. Um, but if you bring it high, then you'll also see uh, that the, the shadows start to blend in with one another and it doesn't look too good and you get these huge, like I said, raccoon eyes. So you wanna be careful with that. The third lighting style is loop. This is generally used for broader or, or more circular faces. Uh, so what it does is it creates a nice shadow line on the dark side of the face. And this is really close to Rembrandt lighting, but not as close and there's less shadows and it still keeps that depth on the face. And you can see as you move it around 40 degrees, we connect that nose to the shadow um, on the cheek. And this is where you get that Rembrandt lighting. This is one of my favorite lighting techniques based off the 1600 painters Rembrandt. And you can see what happens is it creates a little triangle on the cheek. And he used this for a lot of paintings and it's probably the most popular lighting technique um, and used in a lot of Hollywood films and dramas and portraits. And it's really gorgeous. I'm super fascinated by how somebody can paint um, a person and capture the light that goes across their face because it's not like a still that gets taken instantly It's something that takes time to paint and so he really focused and studied this light Which is why I do it. I love this style because it creates depth But isn't as masculine as split lighting would be which is what I love to use for guys now If I position my camera on the broader side of the lighting scale, we'll get 
broad lighting. Um, this is very similar to kind of like a split lighting look, uh, except you're gonna shoot on the, the lit side of the face. This is lighting style that is most flattering for women because it makes it look broad and narrow, and then the shadow side of the face kind of falls off, and so it thins that out. Now, if you position the camera on the darker side of the face, we get what we call short lighting. And this is, um, I love this when the guys are getting ready and things like that, and so you'll see that this is a really a, a cool lighting technique when there's multiple people, and you'll see this a lot of times in interviews. They tend to light, uh, or they tend to film on the darker side of the face. This is oftentimes an angle that looks great for guys and I really like to use this one when I, I'm trying to show emotion with women. Now uh, one of my favorites especially for men is split lighting. This is when the light is completely 90 degrees to the guys cut his face in half and you can see one side of his face is dark and one side of the face is light. It's a really masculine look for guys and it really makes them feel like man I'll generally take this photo and then show it to the guys and they'll be like yeah I look really really awesome. And so these are lighting situations that you want to consider as you photograph on a wedding day because a lot of them you use for different reasons. I would never ever use split lighting for a woman because I don't want her to look masculine on her wedding day. I would stick to more Rembrandt lighting uh, or something that even is uh, very flat or uh, like her facing right towards the camera because I want her to feel gorgeous and look gorgeous. And so it just depends on how I'd want to do that. I wouldn't use butterfly lighting as much just because that's a little more difficult to use and to pull off well. Um, she has to have the makeup for it and things like that. So I just like to keep it nice and clean and I love to use shadows on the wedding day and that's exactly how I do it. So if you guys need anything, have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know.